In the last video, I said that I was going to make something that is not practical for fishing in the winter. I don't know why I do that to myself. Winter fishing is already hard enough if you're fishing open water. The idea was that I was going to make a whopper plopper and try to catch a fish with it. And I'd be fishing just under dams and, and creeks that aren't frozen. That would have been painful. That would have been very hard. We're not going to do that. I changed my mind. We're going to make an ice fishing lure because it's winter and it's the time that you ice fish. So different kinds of ice fishing lures. They have just the standard kind of crankbait, like lipless crankbait style that drop down and you pull up and it flutters up and I'm assuming they flutter down too. Uh, they got uh, spoons. They got these uh rapala makes them i think they were the original maker of these i'm i might be wrong i'm probably wrong but we'll just go with it um they're called the jigging wraps those are cool uh there's of course jig heads just anything that's a, a drop style lure i'm assuming can be considered a ice fishing lure yeah it's just a whole nother style of fishing that you just it mainly focuses around drop style baits but what we're gonna make is it, in my opinion the coolest one because it it really plays off of uh having a certain kind of action and there's some there's a certain design to the bait that gives it the action we're gonna make a jig and wrap i like these they're really different uh hooks coming off the front and the back and that has this uh plastic fin off the back that's a v shape and i'm assuming that creates turbulence down here it makes it dart around i've never actually used one of these but i'm gonna make one so we'll see how that goes I'm not going for fancy in this video I'm going for function I want this lure to work I want to get out on the ice and catch a fish with what I make and I'm gonna fish until I catch something with this bait So I, uh, <laughs> so I drew a big one out. This is one and a half inch long body right here. I drew a small one too. Might have a better chance of catching a fish if I'm using a smaller bait. So this video is gonna be a twofer. I always wanna make sure to align the direction of the grain with the length of the bait. What was that? There's a belt slipping in the back. I'm gonna fix that. So somehow, the wedge for this fell out. That groove aligns with this little notch and this wedge sticks in there and fell out and it was screeching. Got to ping it back in. I'm lucky when I was vacuuming that I didn't suck that wedge up and lose it. I got to set it with that. Yeah, this just loosened up. That's why it fell out. All better. So there's the two blocked out shapes. Um, uh, yep, there they are. On to the next step. I don't know what it is, sorry. <laughs> One sec. I think before the next step, I need to go get some hooks. Cause I gotta make sure that the hooks are gonna work in the first place. I'm gonna have to glue them in. Just buy some straight shank 
uh, size four, I don't know, hooks and make sure they fit, make sure all that goes smooth. I'm gonna go get some hooks. Okay, I'm back. So I got three different kinds of hooks. I got these, they're just long straight shank hooks. Then I got a smaller version of that. And I also got some octopus hooks for this really, really small one. And they kind of face back, like the hook point is up. And I think it might need that to actually stick out. You see how the back of this bait's all round? It might need a hook that does that so it actually um, so it's not just faced like end of the bait as so much it, it comes out a little bit like that But if these octopus hooks don't work, I'm I have tiny straight shank ones, too Rough carved. I did the other bait too. This is marking out where the pilot holes need to be for the hooks and the weight. So I gotta drill down just a little bit deeper with that, but that, that's a good angle and a good sized hook, I think. Here's the front hook on both of them. I think I wanna put the lead in these baits next. I'm not gonna need to put um, a really specific amount of lead in these, I just need them to sink really good. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm gonna drill out um, some relatively large holes and fill them with lead. Actually, oh, I have an idea, you guys will see. So I'm gonna drill out the space for the lead, and then I'm gonna install the hardware that runs vertically in this bait, a line tie to the bottom hook hanger, and then I'm gonna pour the lead. That way the lead kind of encases the, the wire, makes it more secure. Went over the edge with the burr bit right there. Hit my finger a little bit, but it's not bleeding. Gotta be careful. So there's the front and the back hooks for both of them. I got the lead hole drilled. Now I just need to make the vertical hardware going up and down, and then I can pour the lead. There's the top one. I just gotta bend the bottom one now. This is a little too heavy of a gauge of wire for this size of lure, but it's all right. I was able to get it twisted around in there and it's nice and secure. So I just gotta cut this lead flush with the bottom of the bait. Then I'm gonna cover it with some super glue and baking soda. When I'm done with this, then I have to move on to making that fin, figuring out how to get it secure to the back. This is the main reason I use baking soda and super glue a lot, is because Instantly after you apply it, you can file it down, shape it however you need to be, need it to be. The only downside to it is that it's like extremely hard. Like it's way harder than wood filler or epoxy. But you can work it with a file pretty well. So I drew up and scanned and then printed out some templates for the rear fins on these baits. I'm gonna cut the fins out of uh, a piece of thin aluminum so I can just bend them easier and like, uh, these are the first ice fishing baits I've ever made so I wanna be able to do this quickly. Probably for future ice fishing lures, I'll try to mold a plastic or use a Lexan and heat form it. I think they look better when they're plastic but for these I'm gonna use aluminum.
So there's the two fins. I just got to bend them to the correct shape now. So I kind of just fabricated most of this little aluminum piece off camera because I didn't know if it was going to turn out how it needed to be, but it's looking pretty good. All I have to do is bend this down the middle now and it's going to be the shape of the tail fin that it needs to be. Still have to do it to this one. So that's going to be kind of how the hook sits on this thing. It's going to be under it and the hook sticks out from the top, but that's where it's going to be on the bottom side. I need to trim down the edges uh, here and here, probably back to about here. So it's kind of the same thickness as that eye. And then all that's just going to get glued into the back of the bait. So I just cut off most of the material right there and I'm going to file it down the rest of the way. there's the two tail fins. I just got to figure out a good way to bend them now. I think I'm just going to put half of them in the vise and bend them over. I think I kind of need to do this with even pressure. Maybe just use a block. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's just going to go into the bait just like that. In order to glue these fins into the back of these baits, I glue the hook into the back of them. That way I don't have to glue it in after I glue in the fin. And then I just glue that whole thing into the back of the bait like that. This probably isn't the most secure connection. I'm going to have to think of a better way to get this really, really secure and that hook so it's not just uh well that is quite a bit of material to be gluing into the bait but i want it more secure for the future but that's how i'm doing it for these and that's going to get some 30 minute epoxy that's how i'm going to glue those in i'll get back to you guys once all these hooks are glued in i think i'll be sealing the wood on these baits when i'm done with this so i'll get back to you guys then I think I'm going to dip and sand these about three or four times, get them as smooth as possible before painting. The first layer of polyurethane on these is dry, so I'm going to test out the action. So it goes forward when you pull up on it. It falls forward too. It kind of takes an arch. That's good. It's hitting the edge of the tank so I can't see if it does like a figure eight or a circle or what, but it moves. See how the other one does. Oh, the big one does it even more. Try to get it over to the edge and then give it a yank when it faces the right way like that. Yeah, I think these are going to work good. Let's get these ready for painting. Now I'm excited. I asked Chelsea what color she wants. She said white and pink. We're going to give her a bunch of fluorescent pink and probably a pearl white. These paint schemes are going to be really simple. I think I want blue and gold. There's this really cool color that has gold flake in it, but it's blue. I want to use it. There, I left the white belly on it, on top of it's pink. I'll probably come back with the white from the bottom and put uh, scales on it. Hopefully you can see that pearlized gold flake in there. I think that looks good. I might put some orange on the belly, actually. So that was Wicked Platinum, is what it was called. Not quite white, there's a little bit of silver in it. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing to this bait with that platinum scale. Just glued some eyes on that one. This thing is tiny. Looks good though.
I added quite a bit of orange to the belly and then I just added some black scales and some black to the top to finish this bait off. I decided I want more of an orange bait. Last step. Clear coat. They're just gonna get a 30 minute epoxy clear coat. All rigged up and ready to go. Those look good. <clears throat> I have uh, some unfortunate news. It's not bad news. Looked at some DNR fishing reports that came out yesterday. It's been warm. It's been above freezing in the 40s. It's gotten to 50 around here. The ice has been melting for the past four or five days. Might not be able to fish today. But I'm not that experienced of an ice fisherman, so I don't want to uh, push my limits and be on unsafe ice. Just don't want to take any chances, you know. So we're going to go out to where we were going to fish and just kind of survey it, see how it looks. I suppose if it looks sketchy at all, I'm not going to fish today. Um, we'll just wait until it cools off again. Yeah, that doesn't look safe for ice fishing. <laughs> it looks like you could open water fish this. And I'm seeing activity right there. We could, we could fish this for a little bit. We don't have our GoPros with us, but we could just set this camera up and fish for a bit. Wanna try? Let's do it. <laughs> We're gonna go fishing today. It's gonna be sweet. Catch anything, Chelsea? Nope. Did you? Nope. It's supposed to get colder over the next few days. I think the ice will be back on the water. Can I say on to the next bait for this? Because it's not. On to the next fishing trip. <laughs> I can't say on to the next bait. Did you hear that? What? It's just a. You're what? I think someone's in the woods. I seriously heard talking. I'm freaked out. I'm like really freaking out right now. I heard talking. Next video, we'll be ice fishing with these. This is probably gonna be a two part kind of thing. I'm gonna catch a fish with these. So, uh,. Not on to the next bait yet, but on to the next ice fishing trip.